the keto diet. Very, very controversial stuff. Some people say it's incredible. It's the best thing ever for weight loss. It's the best thing for brain health. It's the best thing for athletic performance. And there's other people saying, wait a minute, hold on, not so fast. There's actually a whole bunch of research that suggests maybe those things are not quite true. Uh, there are, in my opinion, uh, many, many people in this field who misrepresent the science, who cherry pick the science to support their particular dietary dogmas and belief systems or their financial agendas. Um, one of the people who I respect the most, maybe the most of anybody in this, in this field as a low carb keto expert is Luis Villasenor. Uh, and I had him on the podcast to discuss. It was a wonderful episode. I highly recommend listening to the full length episode. The link for that is down in the description below, but here's a wonderful little piece of that that provides some, some excellent value. So listen to this little clip and also check out the full length podcast. Enjoy. If you Google right now keto, you will get like probably 20 different answers depending on where you look and which click, uh, link you, you follow. But most people understand it and even is medically defined or in studies as a high fat diet, right? Usually as a diet where 70% of your calories come from fat, uh, about 20% from protein and the rest from carbs, which ends up, of course, in between 5%. And depending on, again, the proportions of fat and protein that you ingest. Usually it was believed, and you will find in studies that this diet per se is more so uh, used as a, yeah, as a diet to treat certain conditions, mostly epilepsy. And this is usually what people either understand or what it's actually written. But it was funny, I was researching the other day and the actual first recorded and studied application for a ketogenic diet was not for epilepsy, but for actual <laughs> fat loss. Ah, for fat the, loss, really? Yeah, and, and the actual person or, or person, the, the scientist that is credited for using the word ketogenic diet, he himself is the one that created both approaches. He started using it first for fat loss, which is very similar to the Banting diet approach, which was even prevalent before the 1800s. It's like, usually it was known that if you wanted to lose weight, easy, just cut the sugar. Was not the carbs per se, but mostly the sugar because obesity at that time was more so like a usually a problem for rich folks people that didn't have to work a lot with their hands that were eating more than they should etc because if we go back to certain times in human history we were mostly um in a way working with our hands we were not eating out of boredom or just because it wasn't really we didn't have like today people that actually make a living by going to restaurants and trying different food sources that's more so something recently or relatively new people have to work to eat what they wanted right so again what what the ketogenic diet is is a diet where most of your energy comes from uh, fats rather than carbohydrates that's very much uh, the definition that I like to use. Now, the danger that I see with these kinds of definitions is that we say one thing, either researchers, nutritionists, doctors, and people understand another. And then it comes, you know, this broken telephone effect where people start to game the diet or try to use their own interpretation as to either make it more easy to do or to make more palatable stuff or keep eating in a way the same way that we're eating before and so we have these uh well interpretations of basically what a lot of people use or understand keto today which is adding butter to your coffee or eating you know a normal food but adding butter on top or lots of oils etc which then again brings us to the other side of the equation where if you look at all the articles or Either, yeah, either sensationalist or medical reading articles of people against or studies against keto, it's because people are precisely doing this amalgamation of things. They're using a standard American diet, taking away some of the carbs, but adding a lot of butter on top. Mm -hmm. So again, it's a high fat diet, but not really as a lot of people understand it. It has to be, as with every diet, done properly uh, without actual idea behind is I don't do it just because I do it because I have a certain goal and taking care of not missing any important micronutrient for example 
Got it. So there's there's a state of ketosis that can be achieved from just not eating. You know, if if oh. you if you simply don't eat, and then what you're talking about here is nutritional ketosis, which involves a high fat diet, high fat, low carb diet. Can you can you just differentiate between those two things? For sure. Like a nutritional ketosis, as its name implies, is uh, you reach it because of certain changes that you do to your diet. So mostly it means a normal mixed diet would be probably 60% of your calories come from carbs, then about 20% from protein and the rest from fat, right? Uh, what we're doing here is taking away the carbs, so that naturally increases the proportion of energy that you take from fat. Of course, you can increase the amount of fat that you're actually eating, leave protein at about the same rate, or reduce it depending on the degree of ketosis you're going to, you want to achieve. Basically what happens is, once you take away the carbohydrates from the diet or reduce them to a certain point, and you start adding or using the fat that you have, your body produces an alternate energy source, which are called ketones. Basically, they are produced when your liver detects that it doesn't have enough glycogen in, in it or it doesn't there's no no available glucose uh, in your body to use as main source of energy so it starts amping up the fat burning and one of the soup uh, well a metabolite that is created from this process are ketones that are in a way a substitute for certain tissues in our body for glucose hey this is ari i hope you enjoyed this video and one more thing before you go Actually, two more things. One is if you enjoyed this particular little clip, uh, the link to the full length podcast is in the description down below. So make sure to check that out. Also, one more thing. Let me ask you a question. What if I could show you how to double your energy levels and dramatically improve your brain function, reducing your anxiety and depression to a degree on par with antidepressant drugs, but without the side effects. Sound pretty interesting? Well, there are in fact numerous compounds that can do this, that have been shown to do this. And I'll, I'll take you through just a few of these very briefly. One of them is rhodiola rosea. And this has been shown in studies, uh, rhodiola rosea extract in people with stress-related fatigue and exhaustion to cut their levels of fatigue and brain fog in half in less than a month. Just this one compound. There's another compound uh, in my formula Energenesis called NT factor phospholipids that's been shown to help repair mitochondrial membranes and mitochondrial health to the level of healthy 29 year olds taking people with deteriorated mitochondria who are over the age of 65, restoring it to the level of healthy 29 year olds. Um, and that has been shown in numerous studies in various types of chronic fatigue, aging associated chronic fatigue, obesity related chronic fatigue, chronic fatigue syndrome to increase energy levels by 30 to 45% in the span of four to 12 weeks, depending on the specific study. So dramatic improvements in a very, very short period of time. Uh, two more compounds that are amazing, I highly recommend, that are in my formula Ultra Brain, along with Rhodiola rosea. Saffron extract. This has been shown to increase levels of, um, improve your mood, I should say, and decrease levels of depression on par with fluoxetine, which is Prozac. And uh, not only that, but with fewer side effects. It's much safer and much less likely to cause negative effects than antidepressant drugs are. Acetyl-L-carnitine is another compound that's been shown to dramatically improve brain health in older adults. It also improve energy levels in older adults with chronic fatigue by between 40 to 50% in just the span of two to, th to four months. And uh, the last thing I'll mention here is acetyl-L-carnitine has also been compared to antidepressant drugs and been shown, like saffron, to be as effective as antidepressant drugs in combating depression, but without the harmful side effects that so often occur with the drugs. So this is just a small uh, sampling of the over 35 compounds that are in my formulas, Energenesis and UltraBrain, that are all proven to dramatically improve energy levels, mitochondrial health, and brain health, and much, much more. 
Uh, and I highly recommend that you go check these out. If you're struggling with depression or anxiety or brain fog, if you're struggling with stress-related ex exhaustion and burnout, if you're struggling with chronic fatigue, go check out these formulas, give them a shot. I promise you are gonna be blown away by the results. And like I said, the science has already proven that these things work. So you don't have to just take my word for it. Uh, there's lots of research to support that. And I'll even link to some of that research down below so you can verify everything that I just said for yourself. So the links to those studies will be in the description for this video uh, down below. So check them out. Uh, check out the formulas on the energyblueprint.com. Again, uh, Energesis is the mitochondrial formula and Ultra Brain is our brain formula. Check them out, try them out, and I think you're going to be blown away by the results. Thanks so much, and I'll talk to you again soon.